Hey everybody, welcome to the program. Mike D here. Today we're fishing with Richie Tomasini. A lot of people call him Richie T. I like to call him Sir Richard of Kendallwood because him and his son are like bass fishing royalty in Connecticut. They win tournaments left and right, everyone knows them, and I can't wait to go fishing because I have a feeling this is going to be a great day. Let's go to Lunkerville. Go on! Fish on! It seems in every town in America that there's a secret fishing spot where the water runs clear and the bass are always biting. And at that spot, there's an unsung hero who knows every stump, lay down, and lily pad. Seems all he's got to do is wet a line. <laughs> and sure enough, he's reeling in a big bass. So if you're looking for real people with real fish stories, then hop a ride. We're going to Lunkerville. GT. What a Come on, man. What a nice day, huh? Beautiful. Where are we? <laughs> I don't know. Is my son? <laughs> lake is it Chandler. a Lake X or my yeah, home. let our audience know where we're home. fishing? The audience is going to know where we are. <laughs> lake Candlewood, my home. Beautiful lake, beautiful day. And what are we fishing for? Smallies, largies, rock bass. We probably catch some of them. I love that. <laughs> I don't now, care. it's um, spring. Are they spawning now? They should be just about getting off the beds of smallies. The large moths are still up on them. Right up here, there's a point that comes out. It's a sunken point. It comes out to a big flat all the way around. I'm gonna fish the weeds all around it to the outside. Okay. We have a point meeting weeds. Yep. And we're expecting these fish to be post-spawn, right? Yep, post-spawn. Which, isn't that a tough time to fish? Yeah, it's very tough. Yeah. Now, why is that, do you think? They're tired. They're just they're tired. not chasing really yeah. much. You know, they'll, in a week or two, they'll be chasing everything, but right now, they're just going, they're going easy. All righty, so I'm going to start. I'm going to find the weed bed right in here. OK, so w what do you got for me here, Richie? We got a little four inch Senko. Mm -hmm. This time of year, post spawn, we like to throw that. I'm going to be throwing the weeds, trying to get some post spawn smallies, some large mouth, maybe. And Weighted just because it's a little windy. Yeah, right? it's a little and windy. This will get it down there. Usually use 3 8 half ounce. What's that trick that you, that you showed me earlier? Arm. I love the little tips and tricks. Give me a trick. Take your line. Mm -hmm. You come down about four guys, three or four guys, and you wrap it at least three times. And what it does is it holds it tight to the rod. You don't get that. Every time you put two rods together, they don't stick together. You just have to remember when you undo it, you gotta make three spins, and you're all set. I've been fishing for years, and no one's ever mentioned that before. It's totally logical. I'm the guy who's um, got three or four rods in my hand, and the, and the line's all twisted, and I'm spending like 15 minutes just on twisting. Ooh. And just barely jiggle it a couple times. After you jiggle it a couple times. Wait, jiggle it or pop it? Jiggle it. I don't pop it. Now, see, I see a tree like that, and I'm like, there's got to be fish all over that tree. You would think. Now, was that, is that more of like a summer spot? Like right now, it wouldn't be a spot? There fish. might be some up in there. There might be some fish bedding under it. But it's, it's very shallow. It looks fairly well, but it's, it's only a foot of water there, which is I guess is enough. Just throw it out there, let it hit the bottom. Mm -hmm. Give it a couple of jiggles. You go to lift it, you, if you'll, you'll feel if there's a fish so on it. So you're fishing it like a jig? Yeah, exactly like a jig. The shape of this goes through the weeds much better than a jig. A lot of guys like jigs. I don't. I like jigs, but not a, for some reason, I don't do well with a jig on cam it. We've had this discussion many times on the show about the bait caster left hand or, or right hand retrieve. Can you think of any logical reason that a right hander, person who's right handed, would have a go. right hand retrieve? Oh, there we go. There's a fish. Oh, yeah. Come on, Richie. It's oh, a, that's a good one. Oh, my God. That's a beauty! This is what we're talking about right here. That is a beauty! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Beautiful! Nice. Wasn't gonna get off. Ha <laughs> Struggling to get the hook out. Oh yeah. Beautiful. That's a nice fish. 
I don't want to hoist him up too far, but this yeah. guy to come over here on us. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a beauty? Oh, man, healthy fish. Yeah, now, beautiful. What you, that's post-spawn. Uh, what do you think? That's a female, I would right? Say I'm not even sure. It looks like a post-spawn. It's hard to tell. Belly's kind of flat. How can you tell the female from the male? I can't. No one can, right? He's swollen bellies in the spring. That's all I yeah. know. But look at the tail. Yeah, see how tail is beat up? Yeah. He's been spawning. Okay. Let me put him back and I'll keep him out of the water. Nice, Richie. Breaking the ice. Woohoo! Give me five. Yeah. Yes, we caught a fish. <laughs> I love that. Man, what a beautiful fish. Well, that's a tough way to start the show because it's going to be tough to top. <laughs> <laughs> Lunkerville's presented by South Bend, a fishing tradition since 1906. Also sponsored by Diet Mountain Dew. Diet tastes better on the mountain. Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. Sunline, the strength to guarantee your confidence. Bass Professor's Fishing Paradise 3D. Download for free in the App Store. Welcome back, folks. Let's see what Mike's up to. You don't want to fish the outside now, Mike. I'm no, I, don't, I, I can't see the inside, outside. I don't know what I'm looking at. No, I can't see the weeds either. I just know that they're in. But I did Is your fish finder on? The weeds are in about Where nine feet of water. Yeah. OK. What do the weeds look like on the fish finder? You'll see the flat bottom. Yeah. And you'll see the scrubbly stuff on top of it. OK. That's the weeds. Oh, wait. There's something. That's weeds. That must be weeds there. Did we just go over some weeds? Right, yeah, we're in the top of them right now. OK. We're right on top of them. Tell me a little bit about yourself there, Richie. What I'm 100 years old, <laughs> 66. Been married to the same girl, it'll be 47 years. Wow. In uh, next month. You got married young. I was 19, my wife was 17. And uh, our first son was born nine months after we got married because everybody did the math, but we didn't have to get married. <laughs> <laughs> I have the two boys, I have five grandsons from 18. The twins are 13, they're all boys. That's nice. I like that. My wife feels cheated. <laughs> she wanted a girl and we didn't have one. I worked for the Postal Service for almost 36 years. Yeah, I'm I've been retired almost was 11 years. So, okay, Richie, I know you, you competitively fish. You also like the fun fish. What's the difference to you? What do you like better? I like tournament fishing the best. Uh -huh. it's, very, it's very competitive. It's, it's stressful. But there's no better feeling when you get a good fish in a tournament. Uh -huh. you throw that thing in a live well. Well, the better feeling is at the end of the day if you catch a check. Fun Cut. fishing, I, that's just a relaxing thing to get away from everything. Yeah. You know? Do you go with your grandkids fishing? Once in a while, not too very often yet. Uh -huh. I only actually have two of my grandsons are kind of interested in fishing. One of them really likes it and the other one's iffy. <clears throat> Three of them don't care for it at all. They should watch Lunkerville. <laughs> they should do something besides play video games. Well, that's the thing is that, you know, when I was a kid, and I'm sure when you were a kid, there wasn't a lot of things to do. Now, the kids, they have all these things to do with the video games, the internet, a million channels on TV. That's why I think it's important to uh, show people that fishing is easy, it's fun, it's affordable. I probably went 20, 25 years without fishing. And then one day, like in my mid-30s, I was like, you know what? I miss those days when I was a Boy Scout. And uh, I went fishing. My so dad I just got me fishing. at a young age. I can remember being five years old back down in Danbury trolling around this little island for bluegills. Uh -huh. He was a trout guy. I, I just like anything. But yeah, he was my buddy, my fishing partner. My dad it was, it was nice. What is that? What's on there? What do we got there, Rich? What is it? Did you put that on there? What is that? It's a bobber stop. What I do with that is, if I want to peg my weight, uh -huh. slide it right down and put it right in front of the weight. This way here, you'll go directly through the weeds. Sometimes if you don't peg it, my son never pegs it, I always peg mine. When the thing is falling down, the bait's falling down, it'll get hung up on the weeds, this way it goes right through them. This is a little rubber bobber stop. Oh, so you, you push it down. Yeah, and, and it, it, holds, keep, oh, it holds, holds. Right, it holds it right there. A lot Instead of, times, of pegging it with the toothpick. Right, yeah, you don't want to ruin the line. That just slides up and down the line, doesn't hurt anything. Yeah. You got one? Yep, I got yeah. one. There's fish. 
We're down under the weeds. I don't know if it's still on or not. Oh, no, he's still on the size of this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not bad. He felt big. Yeah, the weeds will do that. <laughs> I wasn't even sure I had him, he was so little. Yeah, that's not little. He's a keeper. Yeah, he is a keeper. Let her go. Very nice. Fish on. You're on fire, man. That's a little better. Yeah. Is that Smalley? It's Smalley. Oh, beautiful. Decent fish, too. Here's how we net him. Yeah. You're killing it now. Killing it. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Okay. All spawned out. Look at that skinny belly, huh? Taking me to school, Richie. See the weeds in the water? That's what you like to see? Oh, boy. That tells you you're into fish. Okay. <laughs> Why reinvent the wheel here? Richie's catching fish. I'm not. I'm going to use exactly what he's using. It's tough to see where the weeds are. I'm having a problem following them. That should do the trick. I want to hear Richie T's story. I took my son and his best friend up to Lake Winnipesaukee. That's Massachusetts? That's up in uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Beautiful, big, gorgeous lake. So we go all the way out to this place called the graveyard. And the kid in the back of the boat, nice kid, catches a nice smallmouth, about two and a half pounds. He says, oh, Mr. Tomasini, this is fantastic. Thanks for taking me here. He was so happy. A couple minutes later, he catches another one. Now he's in the back, me and my son are standing up in front. Oh, this is great, Mr. Tomasini. I can't tell you how much I like this. About two minutes later, he catches the third one, and you know what he says? You guys fishing up there or what? I got one. Here we go. Here we go. Put it over at Mikey. That's a good one. Yeah. Yes. That was a nice strike. So you got to tell more stories. That's when I catch fish. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. nice smallie. <laughs> Maybe there's something to that because I was just listening to and I was probably being more patient. Beauty. Woo! Yeah, Mike. Yippee. On the board. Now you got the idea yeah. what it feels like, right? <laughs> <laughs> Finish that story. Kid's name is Rob Dumas. So he says to us, are you guys fishing up there or what? Because he had three, we had none. My son says to him, you know you should have never said that because you just Dumasized yourself. <laughs> God's honest truth. For two hours. He didn't get another bite, and me and my son hammered him. Oh! <laughs> so every once in a while, if we're fooling around, we're out in a tournament or something, and I'm not catching him, he'll turn around and say, you fishing back there? Just to get me going. <laughs> Don't move a muscle. We'll be right back after these messages. Hi, Mike. I'm Tegan. I'm 12 years old. I live in southern Missouri. I really love your show. It's my favorite show, and I love it because I like how you just uh, watch videos of people and then come down to their hometown and fish with them and learn where they fish, how they fish, and just learn their lifestyle. It's a really awesome show. And I got a tip for you since you like those so much. Um, if you're reeling in a lure and you know a fish is chasing it or you think a fish is chasing it, just stop. Stop your cadence. Because sometimes that fish will run into it and then he'll flare up and bite it because that's his instinct. So you got your fish. Uh, if you come down, we'll go to Stockton Lake, which is a really nice bass fishing lake. It's about 30 minutes away from where I live. Um, I love your show. Just come on down. We'll have some fun. Right out straight in front of us. Up toward this way. Yep. A couple hundred yards is what they call a cemetery. Uh-huh. It's an old cemetery. They flooded it over. What? So there's dead people. Yeah. Supposedly, they removed all the coffins, but I don't know. Hmm. Might have removed the coffins? A cemetery? Huh. Interesting.
How do they say it? That's a big one. That's a nice tournament fish, right? Look at how skinny that fish is. Is he spawned out or what? Yeah. About an inch wide in the bottom. Beautiful. Man, you nailed it. I thought I had a bite. It's a heck of a cast, Mike. Rock Hickey. Thank you very much. I can't do that. I'm awful at <laughs> this it. Is, I like, you know, I don't care if I catch a rock bass or a perch. <laughs> I just love finding those little pockets. There's a fish right under the dock. Oh, little one. There's your large. Yeah. I got it? Yeah. Yeah. Right by the dock. That's my type of fish. <laughs> fish on. Little guy. One of the kids. Not bad. Don't shake. We'll take him. Sure. Look at that skinny belly, huh? I mean, that's nothing to him. He's hungry. He's empty. You're officially kicking my butt, but it's not a competition, it's fun fishing. So I share your glory. Um, now some people say I should be a little better after you know, having a show for 10 years, but. I was impressed. <laughs> uh, you, I Look thought you I cast, cast a very well. Caster. You only caught one dock all day. <laughs> You're watching Lunkerville, and we're gonna take a short break. Additional support for Lunkerville provided by Metzuo America, tried and true lures at a price you can afford. Hurricane Salt Tackle, a force to be reckoned with. Celsius, ice fishing gear for hard water anglers. BassResource.com, the ultimate bass fishing resource guide. You and your son are like Connecticut bass fishing royalty in my mind. I see you guys everywhere winning this tournament and that tournament. You, do you really enjoy uh, competitive fishing? Richard? Oh, it's, it's so much different than fun fishing. It's so much more exciting when you catch a fish. It's also very heartbreaking when you drop a fish or you don't get bit. But yeah, I, I started in 2006. I joined the Watershed Club. You started fishing then or started, started fishing competitively? Seriously, uh -huh. competitively. I fished as a non-boater for a couple of years and I was a boater for a couple of years. And, then me and my son teamed up and went with Atlantic. You're with Atlantic Bassmasters? We were yeah. with Atlantic, yeah. We dropped out this year. We got into another different club. But you've had a lot of success. We've done pretty decent. We've uh, paid for our entry fees every year, but you can't make money doing this. And what advice as a tournament angler, as a very successful club angler, would you give to someone who wanted to give it a shot? Get in a club as a non-boater. It's very inexpensive. It only costs like 20 to 25 dollars a tournament, maybe a little bit more. You get to fish behind all kinds of different people and learn all kinds of different techniques. I fished two years as a non-boater and it was terrific. I knew some and I learned a lot more. Mm -hmm. Can't go wrong. And it's all about learning. And that's when I started Lunkerville, that was my philosophy, that anybody who has a passion for fishing has something to teach me. Yeah. That's how to do it. Come here, little fellow. Stop shaking. Little? Yeah. Let's see him. Don't hide him. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can hide a big fish behind me, huh? <laughs> Gorgeous looking fish, isn't Beautiful. it? Look at that. It looks like a pre-spawner. My buddy already Singer, the guy that taught me everything about bass fishing. His grandfather helped build this lake, and he's got all the prints of where everything was. Oh. There we go, there's one. Crank him in, Mikey, crank him in. Ah, <laughs> he's feisty. Woo! Nice. Dark colored fish, yeah. huh? He's down there.
Yeah, beautiful. The smallies like me. <laughs> What's the hazard here? There's about three feet of water in one little spot over there. When the water's down at all, it can be a real problem. Let's see if there's a fish on a concrete block. That's the race scully. Is that what you like to do? He's like, anytime you see a buoy, there's a fish. Because there's a big piece of cement. Yep. Fish on. That's a spot. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oof. You were on fire. Uh, nope, this one a little chunkier than that last one, but not much. Oh yeah, Richie. It was a great day for fishing, Richie. You know, here you go saying uh, last night, oh, it's post-spawn conditions, we're not gonna catch fish. But you know, when the guest says that, we always catch fish. And when the guest says we're gonna catch 100 fish, we don't. That's just the way of Lunkerville. I really appreciate you taking me out fishing. Um, why don't you explain what our strategy was today? Our strategy was hopefully to catch fish in the weeds and there were some there. I was thinking about going to docks. We found them in the weeds. I was thrilled to catch what we caught. That's, you enjoy that type of fishing. I did get yes. my one dock fish, which is Yeah, good. you did get a dock fish. That was fish. cool, I targeted right, it, got right. it. Uh, you have the high hook and the lunker, yeah, but I wouldn't have any the boat. other way. <laughs> I get more casts than you. And this is my thing. This is true. This is true. But hey, beautiful day. Had a great time. Thanks a lot for taking me fishing. Thank you, buddy. All right. And a happy birthday to my wife, Sue.